get a lot of comments. You look light, not lovely, nice, and all that kind of stuff anyway. All right, thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. This is Noshin Mukhtar, and you're watching the Business Excellence Show. And today with me, we have Fleming Runford as our routine is. Hello, Fleming. How are you, and how is life? Uh, life is good. Life is great. Uh, actually, the year began very well, um, engaging with a lot of potential clients. So we're visiting and, and uh, actually focusing on universities right now, Innovation Labs, Innovation Incubator, certifications of that and so on and so on. So, yeah, I'm happy as usual. That's the code you put on every morning. Yes, true, true, absolutely true. So today we are going to talk about some of the challenges that are faced by corporate world. Uh, according to Fleming, a lot of business leaders he has met recently are worried about how they're going to retain employees and what kind of changes are happening in um, in the business world in 2021. So we are going to discuss different challenges with Fleming today and we will find how we can make things better. Uh, before we start, hello everybody, hello Lakshmi Kant and good to have you with us here. Please drop in the comments your greetings and where you are joining us from and how you are feeling today and what are your views about the current topic. Uh, we are very happy to have you with us, Samira. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. So Fleming, yes, one of the major challenges that are faced by corporate is retention of employees. So why do you think this problem is occurring, that people are moving on towards new jobs and they are not staying with their current companies? Actually, uh, it was the national coming up and saying that a lot of people will change their jobs this year. Uh, perhaps because last year a lot of people were fired because you can say manager leaders were focusing on efficiency, how to reduce cost. And that's not effectiveness because effectiveness is doing the right things right. So they may have fired some people or they may have done something very quickly short term and now they are hiring new people and how do we actually keep those in the place? That, that's uh, or keep those in the organization because uh, that hiring, firing and doing a lot of different things that affects our customer satisfaction areas that affects the whole organization. True. And it's actually not new because something I've been working with, you can say company culture, uh, organizational culture, happiness culture audit mm -hmm. for the last decade. How do we uh, engage employees how do we uh, reduce retention of workers uh, we know that up to uh, or some organizations has very large number and we can actually reduce that with up to 55 percent if we're looking into you can say employee satisfaction employee engagement we know by gallup's 2017 research that 15 percent of employees are actually very very comfortable committed, accountable in organization. 67% is, you know, um, doing minimum, investing minimum time, and they seem happy. And we have 18% who is actually disengaged and trying to, um, you can say, destroy the organization. That's numbers from Gallup. We also got numbers from Gallup last year saying that in the beginning of 2019, when we have an unemployment rate of 4%, we knew that 71% wanted to change their um, work or change where they are working. Right. So, so it's not, not something new, and mm. yet it, it may be increased because we may have low salary. Yes. Low salary could be a major reason for losing employees. Whenever they will find a, a better option, a, a better offer, they will certainly make a decision of moving. Mm. Yes. Um, you can what can managers employee. do to stop that? Should they offer a better package before yeah, the employees? The, the, the thing is, when we're looking at, 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 at organizations, and I've been looking at organizations for a decade, together with seven practitioners license, uh, we are focusing on, on, on vision, mission, values and goals in an organization. And right. when I recently engaged with, with, you can say, LinkedIn and CEOs and, mm -hmm. and, and, and 
yeah, they are actually growing. They have uh, perhaps a coach or whatever. And then the next question when I'm engaging with, with organization is that, good, great, fine. You, you got vision, you got mission, you got values, you, you are growing. But right. is that put into the hearts and minds of the people in your organization? Yes. Do they know your vision, mission, values, goals? Are they in totally alignment? That's just the vision, awareness of having the right kind of resonating mission and vision will stop people from moving on when they're being offered better salaries where they can have a better life. Like Shema is saying, now they're taking advantage of employees by reducing the salary. So yes. when, when, the, when the employees are paid low, do you think that just the value system will stop them from moving? Just the vision will stop them from moving? Do you think that the, the vision moment, and value system can feed them better? Yeah, yeah, yeah but the, the, the part is that if you're asking organizations if they have an employee engagement strategy, 40% uh -huh. so of HR is saying no. Okay. If you're asking employees in that area, then you can say that I think about 17% um if we yeah i'm looking at because i've been investigating i always investigate i'm not saying something that is not backed up by statistics so i need to 60 percent of employee surveys said that the company doesn't have an employee engagement strategy surprisingly 40 percent of human resource professionals also agrees that this is not existing so employee satisfaction strategy Yes. We know that 60% of employees do not think that it's existing working in an organization. They've never seen it. We know we know that 40% of HR says, professional says that, no, no, this is not something we have. So, so one thing is salary. And of course, salary is reduced in these times because this is the way where you focusing on efficiency, short-term goals, what can we do? We need to survive. Great. We are firing people and we mm -hmm. are hiring new people with a lower salary and taking away all the benefits. Right. This is a short term solution. True. And this only creates unsatisfied employees because yes. you are now going to get hired for a lower salary and you had a high salary before. Of course, you're not happy. Yes. What can I do in my organization to increase your happiness? Okay. Where, where do I need to focus as a leader? What do I need to do? I, I would say five powerful steps is for a manager to focus on his employees and improve employee engagement he needs to know who his employees are first of all who do he want to engage with who do he want to increase the 15 percent of employees who is actually satisfied he doesn't need necessarily to focus in that area the 67 percent who is not just going to work to get a salary they are not happy they're not this they seem satisfied mm. that's where he needs to put his focus right. this 18% who is there to destroy the business. We all know them. They are toxic people. They are complaining. They are, you know, doing a lot of negative stuff. And, yes. and, and if they get the we power. Have, yes, we have a comment from Sahir. Yes. He says, of the please. Yeah. Because we also know that 71% that of in, the, in January 2019, when we had an unemployment rate of 4% in the US, that 71% was ready to change their job. So, so employee satisfaction is, is something we really need to put focus on. So here we know that their motive, motive is a higher salary. Yes, it is absolutely right, So hard because a lot of organizations was focusing on short-term solution, firing mm -hmm. and hiring for a lower salary. 
Yes. What is happening now? You're, you're, you're not having the qualified people, maybe. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of people got fired with a very good qualifications, but they yeah. got hired again for a lower salary. Mm -hmm. So, so where is it you need to find out? What is it you need to find out? You need to engage these people and, and, and communicate with these people. Okay. You need to talk to them. One of the things you can put focus on is when you're talking to your employees, do they really know what is expected of them and okay. their work quality? This is mm -hmm. where, where, where we're starting. What, what we have lost now is trust. Yeah. We have lost a lot of trust and an organization losing trust is really in trouble. Hmm. Because trust is the fundament of everything. Yes. But they, other organizations didn't fire. They just said to the managers, you're not getting salary. Yeah. Or other organizations said, you know what? Uh, you can go on leave and some people didn't couldn't afford going on leave and then you were working in the team and you were helping each other that's another way of, of making I can't hear you but that's another part that's another part of making the solution we faced a lot of trouble with the COVID-19 but how did we solve that did we go for the one thing we thought was the right thing just to fire? Or did we sit down with the team and discuss, well, what are we going to do? How are we going to face this situation? Were we engaging with people or not? You can say that the organization who just fired, absolutely, Noah. Some employers are taking big decisions without consulting employees. Yeah. If we had consulted the employees, we could have found a solution where everybody was happy. We know organizations where people are saying, I will reduce my salary to half. I can survive on half. There are others who couldn't. So this is actually where we communicate with people, where we have built the relationship, where we have the trust, where we have also consistency. So, so what are we going to do if we didn't do that if we didn't engage with our employees we didn't take a you can say um a democratic we didn't make a democratic solution mm -hmm. we just fired because this was the way efficiency we need to fire we need to fire we're facing we don't know what's going on then we really have a problem how do we now build our organizations again? Because going back to the people we fired, they will say, I'm not going to do this, but, but they will say, no way. You fired me. I'm not coming back to this organization. Yes, they made the easiest solution, which is termination. If they had made the other solution, which was the relationship, democratic or sitting down and communicating how are we going to solve this situation what can we do please inform us and so on and so on then they wouldn't have the trouble because then they will they will, they will just start growing from now when the market is opening up when everything is start happening and so on then people's salary will raise and so on and people would have stayed in their job and 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 people would still be happy, but the, the place where they actually fired and rehired, the only thing that's making people come to work is their salary, nothing more, because they absolutely need an income, but they're not satisfied with anything else. Is that right or wrong? Right, but do you think other kinds of satisfactions can replace income? Yes, in the moment we start communicating. It's not a, a new pheno phenomenon that, that people are going out and, 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 and changing their jobs. There's many indicators of why are you changing jobs? If you want to engage with your employees, 
they need to know exactly what's expected of them and which kind of quality. That's a, where, a place to start. I started with the other part, which was at the CEO, the boardroom. What is the vision, mission, values of this organization? Is that communicated to the single individual, to everybody is in the, in the organization? Is there alignment and congruence? What we are talking about here is trust. What is motivating you going to work when you have a reasonable salary? It is that you know what is expected of you. Right. It is that you have the resources and the training to thrive in your role. Okay. It is that you have the opportunity to do what you do best. Right. Every single day. What are some of the best strategies for employee engagement? What are some of the best strategies? You start to build from the top. Okay. And 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 and, and we, we actually worked with Google and with my partners. Google had a retention very high because Google was the place that everybody wants to work because this was an innovative place. So they had a very high retention of workers because when people came in and found they were not going to invent, they were actually going because Google had done what uh, invented the things they needed to invent they were going to sell the products, they left. Then Google thought, okay, fine, what can we do? We are making uh, gyms, we are making swimming pools, and we are doing a lot of stuff in that area. We're giving them apples and, and stuff like that. It didn't work. Why? Because the leaders didn't use the facilities. We still were focusing on the top. And people, people are emotional. 17% of, of decision-making of employees are emotional. Leaders may think that people are rational, but they are not rational. They are emotional. And that's what they are emotional decision-makers. So, so we need to change the culture. As a leader, you need to, to find the right people and put them on the right seats. Right. Uh, Muhammad Talha is sharing his experience as a manager. He used to manage his people by talking to them, involving them in moments, involving them in valued projects, and giving them more quality time. And it worked. It, but it can, it cannot work for longer. Yeah. I mean, what, what is that last sentence? Did it work or did it not work, Mr. Talha? It cannot work for longer. He. Why do you think, Talha, it was not working for longer? Please share your views in the next comment. Why do you think it was not working for long for your people? You mean it worked for short term, but not for long term? I think that involving people in, in moments, taking their views and opinions and encouraging them to come up with new ideas and work on valued projects can work long term. I, I know it can work long term. Uh, we, what we have done for the last decade when we work with the ESQL strategic value map is focusing yeah. on the values because values are drivers. Right. Values are the fundament for your decision making. Right. So, sure. so in the moment, we actually respect each other. And again, in the moment, we are no longer positional leaders, but we are people developers. This is a totally different. We mm -hmm. engaged in Jordan with a large company who said, you can't do anything for us. We, we have done the latest neuroscience. We have done everything in our mm -hmm. organization. And my only question was to this organization, yes, you have made the, the training courses. You have done all the good things. Is that right? And they said, yes, God, good. Is it implemented? Are the people living by these new things? Mm -hmm. uh, no. <laughs> So, so that's where we or I work. This is the aha moments. This is finding the passion. This is the inside out learning. As I said, what you are best at doing, you're doing every single day when you're working in an organization. If you have a reasonable salary and you do what you're best at doing every single day, are you going to leave? Uh, if it is the same kind of routine, you know, in 2000, 
11, I, I quit. I was offered a promotion on my job. I quit. And they were paying me more. And still I quit. Because they yeah, were asking me to do... You got the, more the, money. The, see, they were asking me to do the same kind of work repetitively for the rest of my life. And I cannot do that. I'm not a robot. I need to do something creative. I need to do things that excite me. Things that make yeah. me grow. And I said, sorry, I cannot do this. Yes, but what was my question to you? If you are doing what you're doing best every single day, are you quitting? If I am doing what I'm doing best, I will not quit. Absolutely. You were you were asked for a higher salary to do mm -hmm. routine work. And that was not fulfilling you. Yes, it that was not. not giving you balance in life. No. That was it not you. It was going to trap me into the same cage for next 15, 20 years. Yes, because you are not growing. And you are a person who wants to grow, like me. Yes. You have people who are going to work every single day, and they are just moving dips to daps. They don't need their head. They can leave their head on, 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 on the, in the bed in the morning, and then they can go for work. But that's for satisfying for them. So you need to find the right people for the right seats in your organization. You need to find the talents who wants to grow and start growing them. The people who wants to move dips to daps every single day who can leave their head at home. You'll find the right space for them and they will be happy. Right. But if you don't find the right people for the, your organization, the people who backs up your vision, your mission, your goals, and your values, you have destroyers in your organization. And especially if you have them as leaders, because they don't care. They're among the 67% who is doing a minimal hmm. and not investing in their, in their work. Yeah, so I believe that you have summed up very correctly, like key drivers of employee retention include value, well, the, the, company, the workplace flexibility, benefits in terms of good pay. Then career development is, is like you have said, if people are not growing it, they do not find enough challenges. If you're not engaging them the right way, if you're not implementing what you're teaching them, it's not going to um, have them stay. I and, said finding the right people for the right seat in the bus. Because okay. I can try, if you're the person who wants to leave your head at home, mm -hmm. and I try to grow you, you'll be unsatisfied. Yeah. If I'm, I I'm need to find the right people for the right seats. Mm -hmm. So, so I, know, I know what is expected of me and my work quality. This is me as an employee. I need to know that. Hmm. I also have the resources and training to thrive in my role. If I'm not wanting to grow, I don't care about this. If I'm wanting to grow, that is important for me. Yeah. If I, if I don't have that and I really want that, I'm unsatisfied. Hmm. I have the opportunity to do what I do best every single day. If you right. have that, you're not leaving because you left because you got the wrong job. And even though you got a higher salary. So money was not your motivator. It's the same like you have a job and, 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 and then you got a great idea and then you're quitting your job and then you're starting your own business. Yeah. That's the way you thrive. But many people don't thrive that way. And yet it's all about finding what you're good at and, and, and most people or a lot of people are looking for something they are missing but they don't know what it is uh, i am uh, an adventure loving person you know i do things that are highly yeah. ambitious <laughs> i frequently receive recognition mm -hmm. and praise and constructive criticism is another factor okay if I frequently receive recognition, constructive feedback, and praise, that's also a motivator. Yes, it is. I trust my manager. I trust my manager. I trust, I trust, I trust my manager. 
So trust is a big trust thing. Him, I'm not going to stay. Trust is very important for me. It's, it's the fundament of everything in my life. Hmm. And if, if I don't trust my manager, then I got a problem. We engaged with a medical company where they were going sky high and suddenly a bubble burst. We can say COVID-19 or another bubble for this company. And then the C-suite, the boardroom could no longer deliver. And when they could no longer deliver to the C-suite, they C-suite could no longer deliver to the line managers and the line manager could no longer deliver to their employees. And that means that the company went down. Okay. It was out. It didn't. It didn't work because they lo it lost trust. Hmm. When we can't trust our managers, are we going to stay there? No. No. If our managers or leaders are emotional decision makers, they will waver, and they may do short-term solution as like firing. Yeah. which happened a lot last year and saying what can we do okay we are firing and then we're rehiring and we're taking away the benefits and we are taking re reducing the salary that means that the people they fire are no, are no longer coming back to their organization because they lost the trust yeah of course we all faced you can say a COVID-19 but if we had sat down and talked together and made solutions how to face the future. You can say in, 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 in a company like a, an airline company, it would be very difficult because all the clients disappear. In other companies, you needed to innovate. I got a company from Denmark who was prepared to close down. They were working with, with the blue light. I can't remember what it's called. And, and, and then he was going, the, the leader was going to fire all 250 employees. And then suddenly he got a call from Novo, said, you know what, we need what you're doing. And now he's 350 people. Hmm. Because he innovated in his organization. Right. Because he, he trusted his people. He empowered his employees. Hmm. They took responsibility. They had the ability to respond they were creative and innovative, which means that in the given situation of COVID-19, the organization grow. But our employees are there, there for, are, are we having them because, or are we having employees or it's a, it's a two way street. Hmm. It is. It, it, it's and, and, and employee satisfaction. It's like the story of the, the hen and the egg. Which one came first? Hmm. Is it the leader or the manager who needs to change? Or is it the employees? We know that 67% of them is, is just there to get a salary. Yeah. We know that 18% of them is there to destroy the company. Or they, 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 they have their own agenda. We've got 15% who's really happy and really engaged in the organization. Yes. So, so Another point is that my voice as an employee is heard, I'm listening to. This is another factor of in employee satisfaction. Both sides need to be uh, need to be heard. Like the managers need the employees to listen to them. The employees need the managers to listen to them. So it works. Absolutely. My, heard, my, my voice is heard and valued. Yes. I have an opinion. Hmm. Uh, and, and, and people are actually listening to me. Yes. I, I, I can go back to the leadership and say, you know what? We've been doing this for 20 years, but I actually found a new way. What do you think about that? And they'll say yes, because they know and, 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 and rely on you. They also trust you. Trust is a two-way street. And you have the opportunity to grow and learn. This is another factor. If you don't have opportunity for growth and, and learning, both personal and professionally, you're going to leave your job. It's You can say that if people are expecting us to have a conversation of low salary, hmm. we know that the salary is low, but how are we moving forward? 
it's it's going for both of us. If 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 you take responsibility in your organization mm -hmm. and engage emotional and so on, the organization will earn more money and will be able to pay your higher salary. Right. But if you're not, if you're only there for the salary and you don't care and you're doing minimal work and you're not investing in the vision, the mission, the goals of the organization, you're just jumping for the next salary, right? The next yes. higher salary in another company. Yeah. You're not committed so, to the organization at all. There's no accountability in you. Hmm. It's, it's a two-way street. You it can is. say, I clearly understand the mission and purpose and how I contribute to that as an employee. Do you clearly understand the vision, the mission, the values of the organization? And do you know how to contribute to that? Are you investing in your organization? Hmm. Yes or no? If you're only there because you need a salary and you're ready to jump for the next uh, person or employer who is increasing your salary, you're not investing. Yes. You're then not. you have the wrong job. <clears throat> yeah. So let's ask the audience now. Now that most of you are uh, getting new jobs, perhaps, or getting new positions, in these days as the new year has started we want to know what are you working for what are the preferences that you have when you are saying yes to a job what makes you attracted to a job what kind of offer do you accept what do you expect from your managers this is what we want to know so drop your answers in the comments here and let's have a more interactive discussion because when you stop commenting i feel that the life from our discussion is moving on and we are feeling dull. So we want your input once again. We want to know as you are signing up for new jobs, you are getting new positions or perhaps new promotions or new prospects in your professional career. What are your preferences? What do you like? What kind of offers are you saying to are you saying yes to or are going to say yes to? What are your expectations from your managers? What kind of companies attract you? Why would you want to join them? All right, somebody has shared something. Talha Omar, Omer says, simple flow is line managers and trust an employee and career growth, personal financials and goals. Okay, I think he was in a hurry. He listed everything together. But what he's saying is all of this matters what, in what, both. What, what, what he's saying, Mr. Talha, if I'm saying that right, is that trust is the fundamental. Okay. If there is no trust, he's not going to stay. Both <laughs> ways, line manager employees. He also want the career growth. He want the resources. He want to grow in his job. And he yes. wants his personal finances and goals in a reasonable level. He's not, if I'm understanding him right, he's not motivated by a higher salary. And yes, of course, it's a good thing to have a high salary. But what he's focusing on is the, the career growth. What he's focusing on is the employee engagement strategy, which we know 60% of employees never heard of in organizations. And 40% of HR professionals are not knowing that they have one. Right. We have another response. Waterworld International says hope, attention, and long-term relationship. And when I think he wants to say that when managers value the effort, that's the best. Yes. And in a company that he would like to join, he would look for attention and long-term relationship plus hope. Yeah, task meaningful work. What he's saying is that he wants recognition for his job. Yeah. He wants to be valued. He also wants to be empowered. He also wants to take responsibility and have a long-term relation. Relation, yeah, true. So he wants to grow in the organization, mm -hmm. value the effort. There is no uh, talk about salary here from Water World International. There was no talk about salary. It was a reasonable salary. What was important here was that you can serve your family, that you can pay your costs. In your, in, in your private economy. 
Mm. And yet, you can say that that when we're talking about private economy and budgeting, that's one of the courses we have for for in single individuals. You can have one hundred thousand uh, dirham as a monthly salary, and in the fifteen day fifteen days of the month, your money is gone because of your spending habits. So again, are you a responsible person? Hmm. Uh, one of job. the main differences is saying he would like to have job security and ownership. Yes, ownership job, secu what, job security, I understand, but ownership in what sense? Please explain. Ownership, I could imagine that he has ownership for his organization's vision, mission, values, and goals. Okay. He's a rational thinker. Right. I, I, I'm just guessing here. Um, yeah. And, 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 and let's receive from him. His name is Sukhminder Singh. Sukhminder Singh, can you please explain what you mean by the word ownership in this comment? Can job you please security explain for us? What so, did you so, mean so, by ownership? So the job security and the ownership is connected. Because if I as an employee has ownership for my organization, and the organization has ownership for me, they would take a conversation of how we're solving a COVID-19 solution so I keep my job security. Hmm. Job security is important here for, for the LinkedIn user. Yes. There is a question. Uh, yes, he's saying that uh, Fleming is correct. You've given Thank the right you. interpretation. <laughs> You're the winner. <laughs> Yeah. All right, there is another question from Shanawaz Ansari. He wants to know what was the question. Shanawaz, the question is, if you're saying yes to a new position or a new job at this moment, what will be the things that you are looking at apart from your salary? What will be your preferences? Why would you want to join a particular company? What will make you say yes to them? This is the question and you can answer it in the comments and we will play your comment and then discuss it. So okay. if you're applying for a job right now, what what are you focusing on? If, if, if you're looking at job, um, I don't know what you call them, but you go for all the places where you're looking for a job, and you, what are you calling these? These articles, what is what are they called? Sorry for not remembering the name. The ads? Yes, that was the word I was looking for. If you're yeah. looking... If, 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 if you go for a job ad, what are you looking at? The salary as the first, and you're rejecting in the moment the salary is not meeting your your, your wish? Yes, and also the, the company. Oh, because you're also looking at the company. So so the brand of the company, do they have a high, uh, do they have a good uh, recognition in society of being a good it workplace? Is. Or, and then what uh, kind of values do they have? What kind of workplace culture do they have? What are they known oh, for? Oh, workplace culture. What are they known for at the workplace culture? And that brings us back to the C-suite and the boardroom. Exactly. Values, vision, mission, goals. Yes. And are, are those lived, paid lip service? Just something blah, 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 or just standing on the wall or on the shelf? Or are they lived in the organization? Yeah. And, and, and that's, that's, that's where you want to put your focus. You're looking at the, some people are just looking at the salary. Okay, salary not meeting my request, reject it. Some mm. people are not looking at the salary, but oh, this is this company. It's so known for uh, very poor employee satisfactions. Uh, yes. So I'm not going to work there. Oh, uh, this is this company and they have a vision, mission value that I like. I'm going to join. There. It's a good comment, Shifali. Thank you for sharing your experience with us. She says she has recently joined uh, a startup IT company as a HR manager. And before joining, she was a bit scared that whether it's the right decision or not. But now, after she has learned what kind of challenges and blocks startup companies face, she is more comfortable and in the end she says she's really enjoying which is good we are happy That's you're enjoying great. at your workplace 
I'm very happy to hear that because you can say she's working as an HR manager. What is your job, Shifali? Is that to make the employee engagement strategy or is that to just, I'm saying just sorry for that, uh, pay the salaries and take care of policies and what is your job as, a, as an HR manager? Because, or do your company has an HR strategy? Do they have an, an, an employee satisfaction strategy? Who decides that in the organization? Are we in the HR department or are we in strategic department or are we at the boardroom? Who's making the employee satisfaction strategy? Because that's actually where we need to focus. Because if we had an employee satisfaction strategy, we would have known exactly how to tackle COVID-19. True. But if we don't have it, then we've got a problem. And that's why we sometimes do short-term solutions. Okay, we have one more comment. Shanava says he's a business development professional and as yes. we know that whole world is adversely affected by the pandemic so as a sales professional for him he would like to join a brand which is already known for very well known so so that it's helpful to nail it and bring the business to the organization so he's more he's going to say yes to a company that has powerful branding yes so that company is going to join is having a employee satisfaction strategy. Yes. Since they have a very well known brand. And when you're saying the brand, then people say, wow, that's a great place to work. Yeah. We received a reply from Shifali to your question. She says she's handling recruitment and generalist. And generalist profile. Great, wonderful. So when she's handling recruitment, do she know exactly how to hire and who to hire? Because you need to hire the right people for the right seats in the organization. So how are you doing that? Because 17% of people are making decisions by emotions and only 30% are rational thinkers. So how are you hiring? Are you hiring by behavior attitude or are you hiring by skills, technical skills? Because you can get the best technical skill person with the wrong attitude and behavior. And then you are in the 18% of an organization who actually have people who are critical and not engaged. So how are we hiring these days? Are we hiring according to attitude behavior or are we hiring subject matter expertise? Right. Okay. Um, that's all for now, Fleming? I would say, again, as an organization, if we're focusing, because we have two sides here. Right. We have the people who's very unsatisfied with their salary is redu reduced and an organization taking advantage of lower salaries. And again, here we are in emotions. Mm. Because you can say that a job is a two way street. We also have a lot of organizations who do not have an employee satisfaction strategy in the organization. Mm -hmm. and, and if you don't have that, where is that coming from? Is it the HR department? Is it the strategic department? Is it the leader of the organization? Yeah. I've been working with leaders a long time for a decade. And, right. and, and what we have been worked is that their vision, mission, values, goals for the organization is communicated to all employees. That means you have alignment and congruence. <laughs> That means, as again, you said, you had the right people at the right seats in the bus. Mm -hmm. And if you have that, you, you, you are actually on, in, in going up. Right. 
if you if if you if you're not focusing on that area and, mm -hmm. and, and you're hiring by technical skills or subject matter expertise, you have a lot of individuals who can't work together. Right. So okay. what are we doing? Because yes, we can go back to the people who may enter this and say, my salary was cut, my salary is low. Yes. And is that employers taking advantage of you? Or is that because the situation is what it is? And how are you going to tackle that? Or are you going in to work in an organization and say, I, I'm going to which most of the time aren't considering the employee satisfaction. So here we got an answer of my question before, because HR is with limited, you can say, control uh, or limited options for actions. So we need again to go to the C-suite or the boardroom to get the employee satisfaction strategy. So it's not okay that the CEO is growing himself. He needs to make sure that his vision, mission, and values is in alignment and congruent in the whole organization if he wants to grow his business. Yeah, so this comment I picked from Tosif is very good. He says that it was really difficult. Um, it will be more difficult even in 2021, I believe, for both employees and the employers to stay together. And he shares his experience that it was very hard for him to retain his staff especially people who were with them for a couple of years, but uh, they solved their issues with discussion and some strategic changes in working style, and he was able to retain employees. So yes, being open to change can also help managers manage uh, employees better and retain them. If I'm, if, if, uh, if I'm, when I'm reading this from Mr. Tusif Ahmed, I don't know how big his organization is, but it was really tough for both employees and employer being a business owner, which he realized. And I think that he engaged with his employees and took a talk with them because it was hard to retain my staff. And they had mutual discussions and they did some strategies in change of working style and everybody was kept in the business. Maybe even to to see if said, okay, fine, I'm cutting away my salary so everybody can get a salary. He's got a heart in his business. It, 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 he got his heart with him driving his business. And that's why he came through hmm. and seems to, to, to be in a position today where he kept his employees, he kept his customer satisfaction, he kept his productivity, yeah. And he got loyal people because he didn't fire them. Mm. The people stayed, even may, even their salary may be reduced. And they are there because they are committed. They are accountable. And they are backing up the business. Uh, this is a request, I think. Shifari wants to be with you. She says, I would like to share that nobody wants to join a startup company. It's a big challenge for me. If you can share such suggestions with me, that would be very helpful to me. I think she she, she should meet with you and discuss her challenges in detail so that you yeah. can help her become a better HR. Absolutely, absolutely. That, that's the other part. That's what we are doing right now. Actually, we are doing free speaker gigs where we are engaging with organizations. We are engaging with leaders uh, mm -hmm. in organizations <clears throat> where we're talking about the epicenter of performance, the human brain, where we're talking about emotional intelligence, where we're yes. talking about value-driven leadership, where we're talking about mental intelligence because some of the things that we have put up in our brain is not serving us anymore. Shifali, who is now starting in a startup company, if she came from a large organization, there was a lot of know-how, a lot of wisdom. Here she's in a startup company, what's she going to do? What is happening in the organization? How am I going to tackle conflicts 
and so on. So, of course, I would love to have a meeting with Shefali, but I would also say if somebody here wants me to come speak in their organization, it could be 30 minutes, it could be 60 minutes, it could be 90 minutes to leadership, how to increase or how to establish an employee st strategy, employee satisfaction strategy. Where does it come from? We got the answer before, which says that HR doesn't have a lot of, you can say, uh, control or can make a lot of decisions because it's coming from the management. Okay, fine. What is the management's employee satisfaction strategy? How are we going to keep our employees? Are we just cutting them off when we are facing difficulties? Or are we taking a discussion like Tufi said before? He was sitting down and engaging with his employees and, and, and made decisions in fellowship where everybody was heard. And that's another part. You're valued, you're heard, you're listened to. Yes, absolutely true. All right. Thank you very much for wonderful insights today, Fleming. Uh, I'd like to go now. Mm -hmm. And we will meet next week again for the next show. Uh, keep your questions ready and we will announce the topic very soon for all of you um, to prepare your queries so that we can have an interactive discussion. Yes, Thank you for having a great, great day. Thank you in a week. You too. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you.